Hey folks, I'm Greg Keller. I'm Jump Cloud's Chief Product Officer, continuing with our whiteboard series today. Today we're going to discuss our latest implementation of our LDAP endpoint, and that is specifically LDAP authentication to Samba file servers or NAS appliances. So as always, using our trusty whiteboard pen, let's draw some boxes and show you how this uh, new integration works. So we'll start uh, by level setting again. What we are offering is LDAP authentication to Samba-based file servers or and or NAS appliances, which prototypically are built upon uh, Linux kernels, which of course is Samba implementation. First of all, what is Samba? It's not a dance. Uh, well, it is a dance, but in our case, in the world of IT, it, it is a derivative of the SMB, or SIFS protocol, which effectively enables a Windows machine to communicate and share information with a Linux-based server. It's very specifically a Samba server. You can see the derivative, uh, the phonetic of the name SMB, the Unix or Linux community created Samba, which was a server that was designed for file sharing and printer services. And still, these are very ubiquitous to this day, so much so that NAS vendors like Synology, QNAP, FreeNAS, and others have built distributable appliances or open source freeware that are built upon the Samba-based uh, server infrastructure. So let's move into the boxes and lines so you can kind of get an understanding of our integration. So three boxes. We'll do this box first to represent the Samba server, the file share server, or the NAS. This particular box, I'll draw more as a proper image, is the employee or end user's computing device, which naturally can be Windows, Mac, or Linux. We're gonna focus kind of specifically on the Windows use case to really show the reinforcement of why Samba is important in utilizing the SMB SIFS protocol in this particular case. Uh, so let's do the third box. And that is naturally Jump Cloud. And very specifically, this is our LDAP endpoint. So this is the sort of the triangulation of, of components that we'll be discussing. So let's discuss first the setup uh, before we get into the actual authentication. In fact, the, the end user experience to this is very typical as you'll see in a second and you'll see in other videos that we'll produce. And of course, when you trial the product, um, uh, the end user experience is, is very benign. It's in, in fact uses all the native operating com system components like the file explorer, et cetera, to, to get access to the file drive. But this is what we're gonna concentrate on here for a moment. First and foremost, um, the Samba protocol does leverage um, some antiquated technologies, and I will use that term fairly forcibly. Very specifically, it does utilize a, and require a set of attributes, one of which is the Samba MT password. And for those that are in the audience uh, listening to this and have been around and maybe have a couple of gray hairs like I do, the Windows NT and by extension, the Samba NT password is utilizing a very weak and often insecure password, otherwise known as the Windows NT password with an MD4 hash. We're gonna discuss the security impacts of this as well, but more importantly, what JumpCloud has done to allow this critical communication to happen while your authentication is effectively transpiring in the cloud and uh, we'll kind of go into details here. First and foremost, um, like any other integration with our LDAP endpoint, um, your Samba server will be delegated or have its authentication delegated, not locally to accounts on the server itself, but to an LDAP endpoint. Most of the NASs are, are you know, frankly, the Unix system itself uh, sort of favors LDAP, but most of the NASs will have very easy to use, click through sort of uh, integrations with either Active Directory or in our case, LDAP as our LDAP endpoint is utilized. So 
a couple of things first. Now, that's the easy part, just configuring. Go point at LDAP to go and fetch the users in groups. Inside of JumpCloud, or very specifically, the administrative console of JumpCloud, you will define very specific, well, actually a couple of components, uh, a group that you will assign to this particular um, Samba file share, and of course, naturally, the users in that group. All right? There's another component, too. For those that, of you in the audience that have configured our LDAP endpoint with you know, Myriad resources, you know, Jira or Confluence or Jenkins or whatever, you've utilized a very specific bind the end structure. This is, an, a, in, in our world, it's a user object um, that is designed to be the key of authentication and the searchability of your LDAP tree, or frankly, JumpCloud's LDAP tree. We call it the bind the end, as I'm sure you, you do. In this release, we've created a very special new uh, flavor of a bind DN. In fact, we call it a Samba bind. Uh, so this is design Samba bind. This is designed so that for security reasons, the very specific information that LDAP will have to contain, remember that that uh, win uh, that WinNT uh, password hash or MD4 hash. Those will be decorated only on specific user objects, meaning the, the users that you've assigned to a group that should access the Samba server. So that's sort of the first um, layer of security, of the many layers of the sort of, you know, when you peel back the onion of our security infrastructure, this is like the core, the base of it. We really tightly restrict where this information can be decorated on LDAP user accounts and furthermore, how and who can actually see that for, for these sort of authentication purposes. So you, you, um, in the integration with your NAS or Samba, you'll be using a Samba bind DN. Furthermore, the second layer is you'll assign a specific group to uh, be Samba enabled. So what that does is it's the second layer of security. It says of all the groups that you will create inside of JumpCloud's administrative console, which is the one or the discrete set of groups that um, are going to be utilized for Samba-based file authentication. So again, we'll know, we'll designate that this particular group and the users that will, uh, are, are within that group are, should be treated with Samba-decorated um, attributes. Again, um, the MD4 hash is one of those attributes. With all of this set up, our LDAP is very discreetly um, uh, updated with just to those specific user accounts um, with that specific Samba information. Now, here's the additional layer of security. When you're integrating your Samba with JumpCloud, we ensure that the connection utilizes only port 636 or 389, 389 using TLS. Meaning, this has to, we will reject the connection, um, or in fact, we uh, actually, to be very clear, we don't reject the connection. What we do is, if you use an insecure connection, all Samba is turned off, meaning that you can't retrieve any of that information. So there is no possibility of us ha using a weak connection. Um, so in this particular case, Samba has to connect to JumpCloud in a very secure manner, use it utilizing SSL or Start TLS. All right. Now that's all the flavor of the stuff that's going on in terms of you know the restrictive nature of the information that Samba requires. How we reduce the scope of that um, decorated attribute information for Samba and how it ends up in LDAP. So you're in complete control of that. Now let's talk about the authentication chain. Back to the sort of uh, banal experience for the user, it's very easy. Um, they will call up their file explorer as normal, right? Um, either you as an IT personnel or they are instructed to map a network drive, just like you normally do. You know, go to the X drive, go to slash slash, you know, you know whatever the Synology workgroup name is, all that kind of stuff. Um, and they will be issued a challenge, a very typical challenge, which is username, username and password. 
This information that they're entering is, guess what? It's JumpCloud's LDAP username and password, or their assigned JumpCloud identity, to use an, uh, just sort of another way to put that. So in this particular challenge response, the user, when they map their network drive, will be asked to inject their username and password, which naturally is passed over into Samba. Samba, remember, you've set to delegate uh, authentication into your LDAP server, JumpCloud. So it's going to ask for a Samba authentication data request. So it knows the user. It's asking LDAP, give me back that user plus its decorated Samba information. So in this particular instance, um, we will gather that information and send back the Samba data uh, uh, response with the valid data. Great. So now with the data response given back to Samba, what does it do? It returns the authorized uh, transaction for this end user on their Windows machine in this particular case uh, in order to retrieve their home directories, their files, etc. So it's a seamless chain. It's just, again, utilizing JumpCloud's LDAP as the backing authentication store. It includes the required information, Samba-based information and sets of attributes that are required in, a, in this world, uh, which is between, again, a Windows machine utilizing the SMB SIFS transaction, and we're orchestrating all of that communication in you know, milliseconds, frankly, um, in order to do that. So again, um, we take the security of this kind of um, uh, information uh, data, so to speak, about LDAP very, very seriously, and I think you're starting to see the myriad layers that we've walked through in order to protect that information. Um, it's an interesting place to be for a, a product like this. You know, when we do something like this, we'll draw a demarcation line, which is, this is you on premise, typically with a physical device or appliance like a Synology or QNAP, and then you have this world of the internet. When this technology was devised 20 plus years ago, this never existed. The, your world was, you know, on-premise to leverage this transaction, likely with an on-premise directory as well. Uh, in this particular case, now we have to help the world realize that this transaction, these technologies, still very valid. Um, are we happy about SMB and SIFs? No, and do we think that that will evolve? Yes, but until that occurs, we have to help the world with the responsibility of a cloud-based directory, but make the authentication chain secure and service the customer in this way. And this is sort of the lengths of things that we've gone through. So a couple of things. Um, it, number one, please uh, visit our whole knowledge base series of articles on our L, uh, LDAP authentication with Samba servers on support.jumpcloud.com. Please speak with any of our customer success, success engineers who are highly versed now in this uh, architecture and in this sort of communication chain because we know you're going to have questions. That's it. We hope this was helpful and we look forward to hearing your feedback on our new implementation. Cheers.